Hi, I'm Jason Levine, and in this brief tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make your audio broadcast compliant, specifically compliant to the ITU and EBU standards that we have today for broadcast video and audio. And the coolest thing is you can do this natively inside Adobe Audition CS6. So what I have here are a whole series of audio files, and effectively, people are always asking me, didn't isn't there some kind of plugin where I can basically take all of my audio, drag it in, and just say, make this broadcast safe. Kind of like we have broadcast safe colors, effects in Premiere and After Effects. People want the same for audio and they weren't aware that we have a native solution here in Audition. Well you do and it's called Match Volume and you can run it both in the waveform editor and in the multitrack non-destructively as well. So before I do anything like that, the first thing that I always talk about, and I've shown this in many videos before, is using a panel in Audition called Amplitude Statistics. So if we take a look at this audio here, um, I'm going to go over to my Amplitude Statistics panel, and incidentally, this can be found under the Window menu. You can see that I've got mine uh, docked here uh, along the left side. So here it is, Amplitude Statistics. Before I do anything, this is whether the audio is coming directly from Premiere or straight off the camera, maybe I've pulled in files from Prelude, I will run Amplitude Statistics because this is essentially going to tell me where I am with this audio. Everything I need to know. Things like peak amplitude, things like true peak amplitude. Now this was introduced again. This is part of that ITU spec. That's why we have that in there. Minimum and maximum sample values, clipped samples, DC offset, measured bit depth, loudness, perceived loudness, average RMS. These are all the kinds of things you know before you even begin working with it. Forget mastering and finishing the audio. This is just before I even start. So I will always run this panel on files before I do anything else. But once I'm in the position where, okay, now I've got my final audio, I'm doing my mastering, I'm doing my finishing, now I want to make my final soundtracks or just individual pieces broadcast compliant, broadcast safe, I have a very simple way to do that using the match volume panel, which can also be found and then docked via the window menu. So I'm going to take a couple of different audio files here. Let's just grab a few of these and drag them down into my panel. And you'll see that as I do that, it actually will automatically analyze those files for you, much like I was just doing with the Analyze Statistics panel. If we go full screen on this for just a second, again, right away, the first thing you'll see, it's going to give you the ITU loudness, the total RMS, peak, true peak, etc. Percentage of clipping, if there were any, etc., etc. So now what we can do is we can go down into the Match Volume settings. And when I go match two, you can see there's a drop down menu here and right at the top, ITUR BS 1770-2 loudness. Boom. So whether you're doing ITU or EBU standard 1770-2, they conform to the same thing. You see that all you have to do is then type in your loudness figure here in LUFS. Again, LUFS standing for loudness units relative to digital full scale. Now some of you might be saying, hmm, seems like you're missing something though. Shouldn't it be LKFS, right? So loudness K weighted reference to digital full scale. Well, the truth is that with the changes made to the ITU standard in the middle part of 2011, that's what that 1770-2 is. Effectively, LKFS and LUFS are the same thing. We still have both terms because the ITU and the EBU aren't standardizing on one. But effectively, as, we're, as far as we're concerned today, the values as they exist because of the change in the standard are the same. So you can type in your figure. Uh, it just happens to be at minus 23. Let's just go ahead and make this minus 12. You have the option here to use limiting for out-of-band peaks. If you so desire, you can click on Run and that's how fast it's done. This is not editing, this is you just saw it happen there that quickly and it will actually show you the adjustments that were made to each of your files to get them to conform to that particular LUFS uh, level that you chose here in the Match 2 dialog. It's that simple. Now again, if you were starting in Premiere, and you can see that I've got a sequence here. This is from my, um, my most recent music video that I began shooting with my colleague Terry White some months ago. You have the option from the Premiere Pro timeline to edit the entire sequence in Audition where we'll actually send all of the individual audio files and create a video reference for you. If we bounce over to my multi-track, you can see that I've actually got that here. Here's the video with a nice little toothy smile from me. But you can see that you can also run the match volume panel while you're in the multi-track, or you even have the option to select an individual clip and you can choose match clip volume and again right on the clip itself you can type in a target volume and work that way. And when you do that it'll also tell you exactly what kind of changes were made. So again, very simple, very efficient, 
this is a brilliant way to take your audio, take your mastered audio, and again, whether you're mastering it in Audition or Premiere or anywhere, you can still use Audition to do this final step. Whether you were previously working with plugins or expensive hardware metering, again, this was external, third-party, expensive stuff. You've now got this in Adobe Audition, and if you're part of Creative Cloud, it's a very cost-effective way to get this amazing feature and allow you to deliver broadcast-compliant audio, literally, in just a few clicks.